What is going on guys and girls, it's Ghost Robo and this is For Honor. I'm incredibly hyped and excited to be bringing you this video. It's my own gameplay, an epic round that I recorded back at PAX Prime in Seattle and I think you're gonna love it because in an era of sequels, remakes, iterations, and more sequels, For Honor is its own beast entirely. It's made by Ubisoft, but it's unlike anything else they're doing. It's not another Assassin's Creed. It's not a Far Cry derivative. It's not like Watch Dogs. It's crazy and fresh, and it's definitely the most unique game that I am excited for in 2016. It's that much fun. And basically it boils down to a beautiful combo blend amalgamation of a bunch of different genres, franchises, and ideas. So there's a little bit of MOBA here, a little bit of Dark Souls, a little bit of chivalry, a little bit of third person action, and a little bit of flavor that's entirely brand new. So what you're witnessing is a competitive 4v4 multiplayer match in a mode called Dominion, where we're trying to get a thousand points by capturing three specific locations. Now there's four human knight heroes who are going ham on me right now, trying to make life a living hell, and then we've got some NPC, oh god! Say goodbye to my head, I cannot see, but I do know that there's NPC characters for both teams kind of tug of warring, push and pulling in the middle of the field, which brings in a little bit of like a Dynasty Warriors, Hyrule Warriors element. Um, but all in all, what makes this game really succeed in my mind is how intense and how team oriented uh, the multiplayer matches are. Like, I felt communication was super crucial and super cool. Like, I wanted to be talking, and I'm a person who, when I play like Call of Duty or I play different multiplayer. I, I'm more kind of like solo lone wolfing it, but here you only got four hero characters, so in order to coordinate with those guys, you have to make sure that you're working together and really spreading your talent amongst the battlefield, amongst the map, because there's three points, and they're on opposite ends. And the more points you control, the faster and more points you'll get. Um, you're gaining points, obviously, based on what you're doing. And then you'll see those little flags that kind of show us if we have point A, B, and C. And the goal is to get to a thousand. Now the combat itself is also just a shining star here. It's very deliberate, it's very hefty, it's very intense and just visceral. You're getting a lot of gory, great moves on your enemies. Um, and it's all about attacking and defending in these specific directions. So you can block left, right, uh, or center, you can attack left, right, center, and you want to mix that up with heavy strikes, light strikes. And then you'll notice as I rank up, I'm unlocking different perks. There are things like boosting the morale of my NPC soldiers. There's an eventual gigantic catapult barrage from the skies that will do massive damage in a designated area. But these battles are really the crux of the gameplay. And you'll see that each of them uh, plays out differently. It's very skill-driven, which I love. And it feels a lot like when you're in an epic Dark Souls battle and you don't want to make a wrong move. So instead, you got to think and be very careful, and sometimes just go all hell breaking loose, pedal the metal, insane attack strategy, because that is what's required when you see that you have the advantage. So it's got a nice ebb and flow between like fearful tactics and then just like finishing blows, which I really like. You saw a catapult strike was called in there. I've also got like a health potion. I can revive myself up. Um, and this is one map, obviously, but there'll be plenty more, and the coolest part of all is I would love this game if it was just this, just night on night action, feeling like it's got that medieval flair, but really this is just one faction in the game. There's also samurai and vikings, and within the viking samurai knight factions, there's different classes. In fact, they recently revealed the Oni class for the samurai, which looks super sweet, obviously, they are not as, uh, proficient in the armor category, but they've got a lot of attack speed and would make for an interesting and probably tricky task uh, for a quartet of knights to take down. So I'm really excited to see, as this game nears completion, uh, and as I hopefully get to play more, how the different factions war against each other. Like, how does it work if you've got Vikings, which I assume will have very heavy weaponry, um, against Samurai, who are going to be more light and live. Uh, but this stuff in the middle here, you'll see, you really want to get to where you've got like two heroes on one, uh, or even two on two is interesting, and there's such great glorious moments where you can come in and if your teammate's like, hey, 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 I'm at A and it's one-on-one, -on -one, you can be like, I'm running over there and I'm going to deal the damage that takes this knight out. And it's it's possible to evade too, which I think is a nice touch. It would be one thing if the combat was fun, but once you're in, you're in. But here you can use a sprint button and some rolls to get out of here. So even though this guy is taking my health bar down below the halfway point, I'm able to bust a move, get my groove on, and leave. And now I've got a teammate here, um, and so I feel more safe. Even though my health isn't where I'd like it to be, two-on-one, 
gives us a little bit more leeway and room to mess around. And this guy, uh, he is ready for us. Now it's two on two, and you'll see how these battles just sort of epic scenarios form uh, amongst the battlefield as people kind of congregate in specific locations. There, even with low health, we managed to take out both of them. And I was super impressed by my kill count in this game and in the rounds I played. We were playing with some developers uh, who were very, very good and like, they clearly beast mode it up. They said they've been playing every day. Um, it was fun to see their skill uh, at work. But I was proud of the fact that, hey, like, I'm not a bad knight. I may be super skinny and super passive uh, in real life, and I wouldn't definitely swing a sword at anybody. But here in, in For Honor, I definitely keep my honor and, and do my team proud here. So you'll see that the numbers are creeping closer to 1,000. And it gets pretty hectic at 1,000, so I'm just going to explain what happens there before we get to that point. What happens basically is when one team clears 1,000 points, it puts the other side in a status called breaking. Now that means they no longer have respawns, and if you're able to kill all four of their heroes before they can get your the, the attacking team's points, below a thousand then they lose so get a thousand points knock off all four heroes with no respawns and you win the game but those four heroes if they're able to stand their ground and not lose all of their teammates they can either take back one of the capture points um, or gain a thousand themselves there, there's ways that they're able to go through and sort of reverse uh, the breaking status and then it says that they've rallied so that's what you really want to pay attention here you'll see a team get above a thousand and then it's possible for the the lower end the team that's currently quote losing or in that no respawn state uh, to rally and then the tides are going to turn and flip back and forth multiple times so towards the end of the battle um, it gets really intense especially if you have two evenly matched teams like we kind of had here where you'll see we're trading points and both climbing the ladder pretty much one step at a time i'm sure there'll be instances where you will just brutalize a team uh, and you won't have any rallies you'll just break them and then take them uh, and steal their hearts and all of their princesses uh, but in these more you know, fun, fair fights, it's really cool to see the matches go back and forth. I've got really low health and I'm facing two on one. I'm not sure why that guy bailed. He trusted his teammates to take me out. And I guess he was right because he sure did. So with that blocking and attacking, if you match their attack, so like if he's blocking right and I'm blocking, or if he's attacking right and I'm blocking right, then I would hit him. And it's also possible to parry if you're more daring. There's different buttons and, and things you can do um, to go for uh, even higher level of skill play um, in order to get a better advantage. And you'll stun them or you can get like a super armor thing. And, and there's some definite rewards for playing a little bit riskier. Um, you might even see it in this video. I'm not sure if it's in this one or if in a different round. But definitely let me know if you like For Honor. If you want to see more, leave a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below. Um, you'll see there that we broke and then we rallied and that's going to kind of happen back and forth. Um, one of my favorite tactics is to notice where some of the engagements are taking place and then try and creep around the perimeter and see if I can sneak back a point um, A, B, or C. Now, we are the red squad, and so we are slowly siphoning our way uh, towards a 1,000 point break status against the Big Bad Blues. I'm going to thin out the horde here a little bit, which just opens up the middle of the battlefield, helps us get some points, as you can see there. I'm gaining a little bit. So there is a benefit besides just the pushing bolt. You are gaining points. Um, nice there. Now, the attackers, now we're breaking again. You thought we were going to be the ones, but because they took points, now we're down where we've got only four of our guys remaining. It's not four total respawns, it's one life per person. So if someone dies, they are done. It's not like we can save those respawns or anything. This guy is really working hard, and now I'm two on one, and I'm scared. Oh gosh, I have been the first breaked, broke, broken red man to go down. That means I sit here and wait. I've got eight kills, four deaths. I'm leading my team in points, so I've got to really cheer them on and maybe even help them out with this bird's eye view uh, to keep them alive and hope that they're able to survive because if we don't reduce their score with below a thousand, I'm done. Um, so I've got attacker two, three, and four who we put all of our faith in. And now you'll see we rallied because we took a point and we reduced them uh, below that quadruple digit mark. So now I'm back. Infinite respawns are back on until uh, this happens. Now they are breaking. Blue is being broken. And it's our turn to go on the extreme aggressive offensive and see if we can shut down their squad of knights. I really can't wait to see um, even when you mix. And I don't know if it's possible or not. I'm not sure, but I, I'm curious, like, can you mix? Could you have, like, Samurai, Samurai, Viking, Knight? Or is it the way it's structured that your whole team will be Knights, or your whole team will be Samurai, or your whole team will be Vikings? That's a question uh, that I would love to find out, because I think it would be, I think it would be beneficial both ways. If they did entire team engagements, I think there's a little bit more consistency there. Um, but if they did a mix and match, you know, that would be equally interesting. 
um, because then you could have just such dynamic team composition. You'll see now, though, that we've gone back and forth, break, rally, break, rally, and now they're back on the break status, but I gotta get out of here because my life is low, and because we're so close, I don't want to die and get trapped in a break status where then I'm not able to respawn. So now we're breaking um, because they've gone above 1,000 now. Um, both sides are breaking. This is really interesting. Both are broken uh, because we are both above 1,000. If they reduce us, then... They've rallied. They reduced us, so you'll see right there. Speak of the devil. Now we're the only ones breaking. Um, so even though I got them down to, like, I killed that guy and then we have three left, it doesn't matter. Now infinite respawns are back on for them. And this is where, like, your palms are sweating, knees weak, arms are heavy. There's not vomit on my sweater already. Luckily, I kept that in. I had some protein bars and some apples before I played, so made sure to hold that down. Both are breaking, and, like, if you're going to boil 400 down to one... One 30 second chunk, it's right here. It's this break on break status where everybody is just really, really tense and really nervous, but really trying to bring their best play and cooperate. And you got the NPCs doing damage as well. Now, I've been killed here, and so we've got two out. And remember, if they take out our team, even though we're both breaking, they win. So it's three on two right now, and I'm trusting the attacker two and four. I did the best I could, uh, but I got double team there, which is what you want to avoid. This game. Just like some of those FPS games, you want to make sure that you're not getting the tag team by opponents. And in fact, we did suffer defeat, but 3,500 points, double anybody else on my team and higher than anyone else in the lobby. 10 kills, 5 deaths, even though we lost and the team went down. I'm pretty proud of my efforts, and I hope you are pretty excited about this game in this video. If you'd like to see more, I do have more footage, so let me know in the comments below. Hit that thumbs up button. I hope you had a fantastic time watching For Honor. It sure is one of, if not my most anticipated titles for 2016 because it's unique, because it's different, and because it sets its own tone, its own pace, and its own bar. Until next time, guys and girls, thank you for setting the bar of being the best fans around. I love you so much. Till next time, drink so much salt. Thanks again. We will see you all later.